want to talk about a perspective that we need to maintain. I um I, I think you know these things leak, don't they? We don't we don't live in heaven yet. We're we're down here and we're walking through this life and there's all kinds of stuff that we're wrestling with, even in our own hearts and lives. There's issues and sin and stuff that we have to we have to overcome. Um, and forgive me for for using this too much of a Western illustration because we have people from all over the world but, uh, on this on this uh, Zoom call. However, as as Tommy alluded to, what happened um, last week on January the sixth at our Capitol, um, it ripped my heart out. It ripped my heart out, and and part of part of that was uh, not just the attack on what the country is all about and this kind of thing. But part of my burden, um, and, I, and I felt this way for the last 10, 12 years, but part of my burden is to see how Christians are conflicted and confused and confused and how deceived many of us really are that we actually, actually think, we actually think that politicians, um, structures, uh, programs, policies, and all of that will usher in the kind of transformation that only Jesus can give. And so as I looked at uh, what took place and transpired, and I still think about this, I think that there are four critical questions that we have to keep in mind in order to maintain a gospel perspective. Four critical questions. Now, there's probably more than four, but these are four that I think are top of the line. Number one is this. Will I love? Will I love? Now, the reason why love is so important is because love is the motivation of the good news of Christ. Love is the motivation for God's solution to a broken, fallen world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Greater love has no one than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friend. God demonstrates his love toward us, Romans 5, 8 says, in that while we we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And those of us who know Jesus who are partakers of his nature, which is love. Will I love? And by the way, love in the Bible, love in the Bible has to do with sacrifice. It's not just sentimentality. Love in the Bible has to do with profound sacrifice. In other words, I disadvantage myself for the blessing and benefit of others. That's what love is in the scriptures. And if love doesn't cost you something, and it's not biblical love, it's negotiated relationships, it's quid pro quo, it's these kinds of things. But love in the Bible is costly, expensive. And so if I'm going to be a gospel person, if the gospel is going to be above all, then I've got to check my heart. Will I love? And underneath that banner of love is, is forgiveness and grace and mercy, moving toward those who are lost and confused? So that's the first question. The second question I, I find is, uh, am, am I giving myself to what matters most? Am I giving myself to what matters most? And again, I'm just being redundant here. Uh, that has to do with the fulfillment of the Great Commission. The reason why we're still in the world is that God is doing something in the world. He's He's, he, he, he has given us our marching orders in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, particularly verses 19 through 20, that we're, we're called. We're called by God to make disciples of all the nations. And by, by the way, just let me say a little word about the word disciple there. We've gotten far too programmatic about that term and far too process oriented about that term, meaning that we're teaching people to uh, how to read the Bible, how to pray, how, you know, how to handle the trials and this kind of, although that stuff is very important. But when Jesus uses the term disciple in the gospel, it, 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 is, it, it, is, it, it means to bring people into dynamic relationship with Christ and then to order their lives around the mission of Christ. And so, Am I willing to give myself to that? Everything in my life has to be the platform to fulfilling that mission while I have breath, while I'm living. And so the first question is, will I love? The second question is, will I give myself to what matters most? And the third question I find, my ask, ask, find myself asking is, uh, 
Will, will I model what the world needs? Will I model what the culture, uh, culture wants, and, and not wants, but what they desperately need? See, this is a theology of the peoples of God. In other words, the reason why God leaves his church in the world is not so that it might become some, some holy secret society detached from the realities of the culture. No, remember, we are salt of the earth. We are lights of the world. And the reason why he leaves us here, the reason why the church exists is to be the is to be the life, the, the delightful, compelling model of what the culture needs to become. And the point is, am I willing to pay the price to do that? I'm not to reflect the, the vitriol, the anger, the bitterness, the sinfulness, the hostility, the divisiveness, all the name. I'm not to reflect all that mess. I'm not to, in the name of some type of culture war or whatever, uh, ever give myself an excuse not to demonstrate the fruit of the spirit because God left me here. God left you here. God left his body here to be the visible model. And the question is, am I willing to pay the price to be what the world needs to become? And that's what the gospel is all about. See, the gospel is not cheap. If it transforms me personally, it must transform all of us corporately. And so am I willing to be that? And then the fourth and the final question that I find myself asking, uh, will I love, will I give myself to what matters most? Will I model the destination at which the culture needs to arrive? But the fourth question I find myself asking is this, it's the courage question. Will I oppose wickedness and evil wherever it is? You see, that's, that's the gospel's good news because it provides a solution to the bad news. That's the reason why it's good news. It, it can't be good news if there's no bad news. And there's a lot of bad news out there. You can't even come to Christ without facing the bad news. And I think as believers, sometimes we get painted into the corner because we want to impact people. We won't speak up. We won't speak up and confront the sins of the culture all around us and the people around us. And so to be an authentically gospel person means that I, I'm driven by love and, and you know, I, 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 I focus on what matters most and I embrace my responsibility to be, as by the grace of God, the, the alternative to the mess that's in society. But I also speak up in terms of wickedness and, and evil and that which is wrong.